Default community is one of the best and you will certainly feel it when you join it. I wanted to somehow better introduce the community activities around default, but in the end this video turns out to be a notice board for defaulters. But there is a lot to share, you've been warned, so let's get it started. <laughs> The default team is engaged in activities on forum and discord and other social online and offline places or conferences just to be close with developers using default. Recently they introduced default community challenges and those are going wild. What's this? It's a great idea from the team behind default to activize developers to try something new. They are giving you a loosely defined challenge and the community is encouraged to recreate some of the effects or features presented in here. For example, the first one was about recreating effects from an awesome indie game called Balatro. Let's see what community created and what is the next challenge. So Balatro is a poker inspired card game that was actually written in Lua in Love 2D and it gained a lot of popularity among players players, especially for its polished and nice game feel and juice, so a set of carefully crafted effects, animations and features that make it play so good you just can't stop. Some of the card movements and features were already recreated and explained in Unity or Godot, so it wasn't hard to do, even for beginners and the constraints for the challenge were really loose, and it was mainly about having fun while exploring how to recreate them in default. And it was fun. People had fun and created a lot of examples many of which were open source. So let's check out all of them and see who won the first challenge and received Steam gift cards from default. What is cheering me up is that people felt encouraged to start digging into shaders. This unlocks a ton of cool possibilities and technical art is a very interesting branch of game dev worth diving in. The first effect that came up from this challenge was a sick looking card burn effect. It's actually called a dissolve effect and is a very useful and badass looking feature. Look at the awesome card dissolve effect by Piro aka Absolute. Selected by the default team and awarded with a Steam gift card. Dissolve effects are really cool looking and actually really simple to make. If you will be able to make them on a 2D art, you will be only one step before making the same in 3D. As a matter of fact, you can also check out the open source example of such effect on 2D sprites and 3D models by our shader magician Mastermind or open source and easy to use example bar Artsium from Indies of Dubai. Check out the links in the description and if you would like to have a video on how to make such an effect, let me know in the comments. Johnny, who is actually contributing a ton of stuff to default engine itself and is making cool examples for it like PBR for default, also recreated a ton of nice animations from Balatro by just using default's animation API. Added touches like velocity based rotation of card or nice shadows underneath. Dragosha raised the bar even a level higher. His open source card effects kit features not only slick animations and mentioned card burn effects, but also nice 3D perspective rotation on cards depending on mouse position. It makes it feel so much more intrinsic, like you would be sitting at a real table with cards. Moreover, it shows how to make a working picking cards feature. You can intuitively pick up a card you're really pointing on and it will bring in on top of the stack if there are other cards nearby by or covering a card of your choice. For this open source kit, Dragosha was selected by default team for the reward. Schlista was sharing the experience of learning shaders in default through the challenge and didn't stop at a simple rainbow overlay effect, but made it fully animated within the card border, and added two different effects, diamond grid and a negative film effect. Default team also rewarded those efforts with the Steam gift card. And the last winner of the first challenge is Prism Glue, with the recreations of smooth Balatro animations of card movement and working drag and drop mechanics for card selection, with nice subtle rotation animation on all of them. All of those projects are open source and you can check the HTML5 demos on your own. You will find all the links in the description or the forum post about it. Beside the challenge, there is a great card game made with default called Demon's Hand and one of its creator, Willem, also shared the very nice looking shader effects for cards with 3D rotation. Let's hope the next challenge will bring even more blasting examples. Because the second community challenge was about making cool explosions effects, and it was even more loose. 
You could make effects in 2D, 3D, doesn't matter, people have already created a ton of amazing assets. I already added my entry, default debris. It's an example of how to use default built-in components to make nice explosions with physics-based debris, and it's of course open source. I also adore amazing 3D particle effects made by Visionaire, or a simple yet very juicy game made by Insality about shooting out particles with physics and health, all based on the ECS system them, everything open source, so it's also a nice example on how to effectively use ECS in default. There are a lot of other examples of cool particle effects, so check the link in the description and see all the other great entries for the second challenge. I bet the next challenge will start soon. You can feel the default team is engaging the community more and more. Recently, they also shared a retrospective article on the last year's default users' feedback survey and addressed most of the issues raised there and explained how they tried to reduce the disadvantages of using default by developers and now the next community survey is on, so if you were using default in the past 12 months, do take your vote, because it really is hard. There are a lot of questions regarding 3D support in default, so if you have any ideas or things you like from other game engines or editors, put it in the comments. It will help the full team prioritize the works in the next year to better suit your needs. At the end, I want to invite you to the community organized made with Default Jam 2024 I am hosting, and it will have, no man omen, a two-fold structure, a longer period to work on anything you feel like doing in default, with less restrictions just to have fun, but also an opportunity to win some of the PC games I will throw in a pool of prizes. The second part will be only 5 days and it will be a classic game jam when the theme will be announced, so it's for those wanting a little bit more challenge. I plan also to run some activities on default Discord, so join it now. You can find all the details on the each.io page of the jam, so get there and join it. Speaking of game jams, I know I have a weakness for the game jams, but never mind. In April 2024, I also organized a really spontaneous game jam in a freeform formula called Game Idea Jam, where people were encouraged to make a game based on some generated or not game idea, so everybody could actually make a game they like and have fun doing and learning new things. There were prizes and the rankings, so that in the background of this video you could have already noticed some of the gameplay footage from the games that won, and I promise to showcase the games from the jam, but you know, a lot happened, but nevertheless, here are the results. Number 6 is Kangaroo Hoops by Dimas. It's a little hopping 3D game made in default, and the nice thing is that its source code is available at Dimitri's GitHub. Number 5, Card Game by The Apple's Guy 2, which is a simple Uno game, but single player. Number 4 is My Fishy Racer, which is an attempt to very quickly create a 3D racing game in default. The podium is opened by the bronze medalist to buy its gold with the game Dragon Jump, which is a one-touch controlled platformer where you have to jump perfectly to climb up the tower, and it's made in Godot. The second place and the silver medal goes to Ernie Cani for the underwater adventure with a really unique approach to controlling the protagonist, making it a challenge for the game, which is called Mizu no Yosei. The winner of this crazy jam is Min Sofa with the game Silly Escape Your House game, with really polished audiovisuals and engaging gameplay involving ever-changing room that you must escape, but the rules of the game are different at each stage and there is a pretty funny story behind it even. Congratulations to you and to all the participants who got out of the comfort zone and created something. I hope I will see you at my next game jam, made with Default Jam 2024, that will take place in August and September, so soon there will be more info about it. Follow my socials and have fun defaulting!